The Grizzlies' two newest additions, Mario Chalmers, James Ennis, will not be part of this game. A last-minute drive there solidified this win for you. How did you guys get that done? We told them all week we had a feeling it was going to come down. They did not have the luxury of holding tryouts before the season. No, the Carver football team did not even have enough guys to field a football team at the beginning of the year. But amazing how things change in just a few months. Gil, Vince Carter calls it the Tony Allen effect. You put Allen on the other team's best player, and in that game, that best player is completely taken out of their element. Fournette was unable to get in the end zone, and props to that Ole Miss defense. They keyed in on number seven and knew that if he had a big day tonight, the Rebels' chances of winning would be very slim. This is Gary Wunderlich, and that's his game face. He's one of the many Memphis natives you'll watch Saturday in the Ole Miss Memphis game. And technically, it won't be his first time playing in the rivalry game. Nine touchdowns from your quarterback in this game, Anthony Foster. Did you expect him to have that kind of performance coming in? No, I did not. <laughs> but I'm glad he did. Tiger Woods could use a little time on the links. That was tough to watch. <laughs> I'm looking at some of those highs, the 85, you know, weather. Yeah. You know, that's kind of like Tiger, you know, when he's shooting. And <laughs> Some of those highs are like my nine-hole score. <laughs> and at least if oh, we had some. Head coach Josh Pastor will assure you that while this year's team might undersell, it will overperform. It was almost like nobody wanted to play defense. You had lead changes galore, and you also had both teams' secondaries getting torched on several occasions. Gasol, Team World, facing off against Team Africa. First quarter, Marc Gasol gets the pass from his brother Powell, leans in for two. Later in the first, Gasol slicing through the paint, drops it in. Team Africa, though, in control. And Chris Paul said this game was one of the most memorable experiences in his life. A lot of the players were saying that. Gasol, 6.7 boards. Team World down 15 to start the fourth quarter. Jeff Green, the slam there. He had 18 points, played big down the stretch as Team World scored 39 points in the fourth quarter to come back and win it 101. 97. As for the game itself, he got some run support early. Bottom of the first, one man on, Johnny Peralta launches one into the seats. He batted two for three on the day, had three RBI. Cardinals go out in front, two nothing. Meanwhile, Martinez baffled LA batter, struck out eight, pitched seven innings, gave up one hit, allowed no runs. And is stolen away by Hayes. 13 points for him for the Tigers. Gets the turnover upstairs. Potts trying to hammer it down. You love the lob. It was right there, but Potts just couldn't complete it. And our man, Terrell Howell. Williams out of control, bulldozing through the paint. And it's Lawson lassoing in the rebound. He gets it out to Nichols. Tigers with a three-on-one. Roberts decides to fling a three. Air balls. He gets it right back. Pivots inside, off glass, no. Grips it again, throws it up, and goes to the foul line. Boy, I'm not sure what to say about that three. Clark thought about a three. Up top, fumbled and tracked down by the Tigers. 15 on the shot clock. Agnew swinging into the corner, a dump down for Patterson, gets around her defender right to the rim. Weak side rebound brought down by Potts. Buchanan bolting through the lane. A kick out for Smith, open for three. Patterson, she gets it inside, a power dribble, a kick out, a three ball for Clark. Off the iron, and Phillips traces down the rebound. That's still a Tigers now 46% from the field. But again, the woes at the free throw line continue. A miscommunication on the loose ball, and the Tigers will get it right back. This is really unbelievable. Here's Steele. Accelerating to the rim. And he gets mauled on the way to the rim. Well, he is extremely explosive. Onto your state, just 55% from the free throw line. And the second one goes down for Duke. Parker in for Clay. Tigers in front by five. And this is a stat, Jeremy, that just really stands out. You look at the 18 points off turnovers for the Tigers and then only one point for Volunteer State. Yeah, only three turnovers for Northeast too. Doing a good job. Sat his first two seasons at Florida State. Wanted to get some playing time. And of course the quarterback's coach for East Mississippi once played quarterback for Florida State said, hey, uh, John, come over and play with us. You'll get some playing time. 
So it's third and seven at the 47. Franklin sensing pressure, rushes out of it. And scampers ahead for the first down across the 40-yard line to the 37. Yeah, and a nice job of pulling it down, not forcing Hurry up offense. They give it to Horsley running off the right side, bouncing off tacklers, and finally taken down near the 25-yard line, close to a first down. Horsley lining up beside Franklin, and they give it right to Horsley. And he bolts ahead and stumbles into the end zone, 48-7 pending the extra point. Tigers now giving up 28 points so far in this second half. Yeah, now you're seeing East Mississippi just put their foot on the gas. Tigers just 13 first down so far in this game. Jeremy, what do they have to do to keep these drives alive and, and not be forced to a quick three and out? Well, we've got to, we've got to see the same balance that we saw in the run game. They did not have the luxury of holding tryouts before the season. No, the Carver football team did not even have enough guys to field a football team at the beginning of the year but amazing how things change in just a few months. No line, no team. I told Coach we're going to practice. He said, why are we going to practice with three? I said, well, we start with these three. They'll go back and tell others that we're here. And that's what happened. 32 players would suit up for the season opener. Even those kids that didn't have nothing to do in the summertime, <laughs> that's where we got a lot of them with because they were bored walking around the streets. Come on, Bobby. And instead chose to walk into the lives of a coaching staff. Let's go, Bobby. Hard line, Bobby. And bad. Let's go. That's done more for these kids than teach them the game. We're fathers to them, role models, just about anything you can think of, we, we are to them. We, you know, we try to get the kids to reach to the um, to the highs that they can reach. By the end of the regular season, they had nine victories, more than any other Carver team in over a decade. They had to get used to winning, and it was a beautiful thing when they seen, you know what, we can do bigger things in life. We don't have to be average. Still, try being average as a player here when some coaches had playing careers far from average. Went on to... Uh, University of Tennessee, where we won a national championship under Philip Former, and uh, also went on this to, to, the, to the NFL, where we won a Super Bowl championship under Bill Cowher. Just as Cowher built a winning culture, the Cobras are hoping to do the same. I don't want Carver to be the way it was when I came. I want to leave it a different way, and I want them to leave it a different way than what I left it. Seniors like Anthony Foster will leave a program once notorious for losing seasons. It's a blessing. I mean, the kids, have, they had it all the time. We just had to bring it out. Even though Carver just got eliminated in the second round of the playoffs as a team, they had one of the highest GPAs for a Carver football team. And they're a squad that will show you adversity like they experienced early in the season was not too big to overcome. Reporting in the studio, I'm Brian Fenley.